Hello everybody, it's Friday and that means it's time for another Topic of the Week. Last week's topic was great. We had just a ton of responses on the Tomb Kings and people uh, talking about how much they enjoyed them uh, and, and or, you know, where they were sad to see them go or, or whether or not they thought they might come back, all that sort of thing. I even ended up making my own response video today, sort of uh, after, a, after a sort, to myself, because why not? Um, but I would encourage you to go back to that video and check it out. Uh, there's a couple in there that I really like. I thought Skeleton Flower had some really good thoughts on there, so special shout out to him. Check out his video. Um, good stuff. But everybody had some really good thoughts. And as usual, all of those videos that were responses were linked in the comments for that video, which will be linked down below. But let's turn to this week's topic of the week, which is the secondary market. So I want to talk about eBay, but not just eBay, also, you know, Barter Town or whatever. Um, this sort of, again, is a continuation of previous week's themes with an, a whole army suddenly disappearing, that is, and which hasn't happened for a while from the model range. The model range, you know, individual kits have, have gone, but it's probably been a while since a whole army has basically been shuffled off to the side, although it has happened plenty of times before. Um, just if you go back far enough, there is a lot of graves in that cemetery. Um, and I, I, I wanted to talk about people's feelings on the secondary market. Because all of a sudden, that's the only place you're going to get these now. There's no more primary market for these. And so I guess this is both secondary market and out of print armies. Let me see if I can break this down a little bit. So first, let's talk about things like eBay, Barter Town, that kind of thing. And the first question that I want to sort of ask out of the community is, how much do you utilize the secondary market to get your figs? How often do you go to eBay or Barter Town or, you know, your local Craigslist or something like that, whatever, it doesn't matter, um, to get your models? Uh, do you surf it regularly? Is that your primary source? Or do you just kind of occasionally gap fill and you tend to buy retail? And if so, why? Why do you do whichever one you do? I mean, I, I think the answer is probably obvious. I'll give mine. Uh, I certainly favor eBay for everything I can. And the reason is, is because there are just good deals there. And you, the buyer, have all of the power. Um, I am a very discreet bidder. I am an unabashed sniper. I will snipe at the last two seconds of an auction. Um, sorry, but that's that's the way it is. I don't understand why anyone bids before either the initial bid or 20 seconds <laughs> until the end time. To me, the rest of that area in there is just dead space. I do not conceptualize placing a bid on. All you do is drive up the price. Um, but the, the there's just a lot of people who sell things at unreasonably cheap prices. So it's been a tremendous boon for me to be able to collect stuff, you know, for, for really pennies. Um, a great example is War Sphinxes, which I bought mainly just through bits auctions and stuff. And my War Sphinxes, which I have, you know, I bought one new in box. The other five that I own were probably put together for a total of 8 or $10 each. Um, so I built all of them for the cost of one of them. Uh, and so if you tend to buy retail... You're probably being, like, that's good. It's good of you to support the company. It's not that I've never bought anything retail. I buy, you know, new kits that there's just no availability to get on the secondary market. I'll, I'll go buy. I bought Archaeon and the Baron Guard and all that stuff. But if you're buying older stuff retail, what I really want to know is, why do you do that? Why, like, is there, why, and I don't mean that in any kind of accusatory fashion. I just mean literally what motivates you to go buy retail. Or how often do you support your friendly local game store? Because that is the other place I buy. If I'm not buying from eBay, I will buy from my FLGS, but I'm also lucky that I've got an FLGS that's 20% off flat all the time on everything uh, Warhammer. So that's sort of the first topic. And what that leads me to then is the next topic, and that is out of print armies. And this is the other one that really interests me. Because it's tightly, obviously, uh, joined to the secondary market. So my question is, do you try or... Are, let me put it this way. Are you afraid of out-of-print armies? 
And by that I simply mean there are a lot of cool armies that are gone or models, even if we're not talking about a whole army, just models that are gone. Say like the uh, Handmaidens of the Everqueen from the High Elf range. Uh, so again, beautiful model. Some of my favorite High Elves I've ever done. No longer around. You can only get them from the secondary market. Um, all the Dogs of War unit. It's a great example of an army that, that you know, is gone. Maybe you're a fan of the old school Chaos Dwarves with their big, crazy Popats. Um, you know, I, I don't know. There's a lot of examples out there. And how much does the fact that an army's out of print dissuade you from wanting to collect it? That is to say, assume that there's rules or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, is it the rules? Is it the lack of rules that stops you from carrying? Because clearly you could get, like, a Dogs of War army and proxy it for Empire, even in 8th edition. You could have done that. Um, you had, you know, guys with pikes who could be halberdiers or spearmen and so on and so forth, you know. Wouldn't have been that tricky. Um, so, is it the fact that there aren't legitimate rules for the thing and you don't like to proxy? Or is it just that you don't know for sure you can get the army as they're like... Because there's a difficulty to it. It takes months to put together a full out-of-print army, at least, because you got to hunt and search and find the right deals. And it does shift that buyer's power... Like, normally if I'm buying a fairly commonly printed unit, something that there's out there in large number on eBay or some, some secondary thing like that, I, as the buyer, have the power. If the if the price set my ceiling of what I'm willing to bid, and if it goes above that, who cares? Stop bidding. Do not let yourself get in a bidding contest because it doesn't matter. Ten minutes from now, there's going to be another one up there you can bid on. Let it go, right? And just wait until you get it. But that isn't the case when it comes to things that are really, really out of print. I think about the the Marienburg landship, which every so often you'll see go up on, on eBay. I think the last one sold for like 630 pounds. So I don't even know how much money that is. It's a lot on the conversion rate, probably near $1,000. Um, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, that More than I would ever be willing to spend on a fig. But I, I think that you know, I can see where that sort of thing would scare people. Is there, so, so, what is it about the out-of-print army that would make you stay away from it? Is it just the fact that it's not currently supported, so who cares? You don't like proxies, you don't like that there's no rules, or you don't want to go through the trouble of collecting it. So, there we go. That's the topic for this week. The secondary market and out-of-print armies and you. How do those all work together? Look forward to your responses. As always, they will be posted down below, uh, and this the uh, as well as last week's video, so you can find that link and go watch all the great responses from last week. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.